Have you ever wondered why some people effortlessly make lots of money while others struggle to make ends meet? It's a common question we ask as we manage our own money. What if I told you that simple money secrets have been intentionally kept away from most people? It might sound strange, but if it's not true, how do some people get rich so quickly? The reason is that there are straightforward money rules that rich folks know, but they don't want to share these secrets. In this video, I'll reveal those hidden money secrets to help you become rich. 1. It's not just about making more money, it's also about saving it wisely. You might hear people say that if they earned more, they'd be fine. But here's the truth. Having a bigger paycheck doesn't always mean you'll become rich. Think of your money like a bucket of water. No matter how much you pour in, if there's a hole at the bottom, it will eventually run out. The same goes for money. You could be earning a lot, but if you're spending more than you earn, you'll end up with nothing. Being wise with your money means thinking about where it goes, focusing on what you need rather than what you want, and making sure you have money left to invest at the end of the month. If your money runs out before the month ends, it's a warning sign. It's time to take a closer look. Maybe you can cut some everyday expenses. It's important to remember that anyone can go out and make money. And while many people are good at making money, they aren't good at protecting it. The skill of protection means defending your money from things that want to take it away. What sets those who become rich and stay that way apart from those who struggle financially is how they handle the money they have. So, it's about finding a balance by living below your means. You're not denying yourself. You're setting yourself up for a future of financial peace and freedom. 2. Passive income is the key to financial freedom. Have you ever wondered how amazing it would be if your money could make more money all by itself? We all had that dream of waking up and finding extra cash in our bank accounts without having to work for it the day before. It almost sounds too good to be true, right? Well, that's the magic of passive income. Instead of trading your time for money in a regular job, passive income allows you to set something up once and have it keep earning money for you over time. Now, don't get me wrong, starting a source of passive income is not easy. Whether it's writing a book, creating a blog with ads, or investing in properties to rent out, there's some hard work involved at the beginning. But think of it like planting a seed. With a little care and patience, it grows and rewards you for years to come. That's exactly what investing does. Instead of letting your money sit idle, it can be out there working and growing, multiplying over time. When we talk about investing, it's not just one thing. You have various options, from buying shares in big companies to lending your money through bonds or even owning land and buildings in real estate. The key is to choose what feels right for you, taking into account how much risk you're comfortable with and what you hope to achieve. A smart approach can pave the way to watching your savings grow and flourish. The best part is that passive income can serve as a safety net in case life throws unexpected challenges your way, like a sudden job loss or unexpected expenses. This income can help you navigate through tough times. So, while it requires some initial effort, the peace of mind and financial security it offers are truly invaluable. 3. Not all debt is bad. Debt isn't always a bad thing. When people talk about debt, they usually think it's something negative, but it's important to know that not all debt falls into this category. In fact, when used wisely, debt can serve as a valuable tool to help you increase your wealth. Think of debt as a double-edged sword, with one side being potentially harmful if mismanaged and the other side having the potential to significantly enhance your wealth if you said responsibly. Imagine it as a way to leverage your finances. You use a small portion of your own money and a larger portion of someone else's to make more substantial investments than you could make independently. Let's take a classic example, real estate. Suppose you want to purchase a $300,000 house. You don't need to have the entire $300,000 up front. You can start with a $60,000 down payment, which is your money. The remaining $240,000 can be borrowed as a mortgage. If property values increase, the entire value of the house goes up, not just the portion you initially paid for. So, if the house becomes worth $380,000, you've earned $80,000 from an initial investment of $60,000. This illustrates the power of strategic debt usage. Remember, it all comes down to how you use it. And the rich use debt wisely to their advantage. 4. Your social circle matters. Learn and grow with the right people. 
Consider the company you keep. It can reveal a lot about you. For instance, your friends or those you spend the most time with can significantly impact your choices and behaviors. Let me give you an example. If you surround yourself with people who invest in stocks regularly, you're more likely to develop a habit of investing your money for your future. On the other hand, if your circle consists of big spenders, you might find yourself spending more than you earn. The people you associate with have a profound influence on your decisions, particularly when it comes to money. Now picture this. What if you had a mentor who excels in financial matters or friends who consistently make wise financial decisions? Wouldn't it be fantastic to gain insights from them? By prioritizing your social connections, you have the opportunity to meet and learn from individuals who have achieved success in their financial journeys. They can share invaluable tips, tricks, and advice based on their personal experiences. It's not just about making money, it's also about learning how to manage it effectively. Who better to learn from than those who have already navigated this path? So, choose your company wisely and absorb the wisdom they have to offer. Building a network of like-minded individuals, engaging in financial mindset networking, and seeking mentorship are powerful strategies. The wealthy understand the importance of these connections and actively build and nurture their networks. 5. Rich people don't save money in the bank. People often tell you to save your money in a bank. Your parents, the news, and the banks themselves all say so. But is saving all your money really the best way to become rich? Not always. When you put your money in a bank, you're not making yourself rich, you're making the bank rich. Banks make a lot of money by taking your deposits and lending them to others at high interest rates while paying you very little in return. This doesn't mean you should never save money in a bank, it means you should be smart about it. You can keep enough money in the bank to cover emergencies and your everyday bills. I like to have a year's worth of expenses saved, but if you're just starting, having three six months worth is a good goal. The rest of your money should be invested in things like real estate, individual stocks, and index funds. This way, you can make much more money than by just leaving it in the bank. So, it's a good idea to save some money, but also invest as much as you can to grow your wealth. 6. True wealth isn't just about having fancy things. Many people think that being rich means having lots of money to buy expensive stuff like cars and gadgets. But there's more to it than that. In a book called The Psychology of Money, the author Morgan Housel explains that real wealth is not always visible. Some of the wealthiest people I know have regular cars and modest homes. They don't show off their money. However, if you saw their bank accounts, you'd be amazed at how much money they have. You know those flashy cars and brand new gadgets that people like to show off? They might look cool, but they don't always mean someone is truly wealthy. Being rich is not just about what you own, it's about the value of what you own over time. It makes sense that the more you spend, the less money you have left. But it's hard to resist the temptation to buy new things like cars and vacations. Life isn't just about saving and investing. You should also enjoy it. But you should know where to draw your line while you're at the beginning of your financial journey. It's simple, the more you save and invest, the faster you can become rich. So, if you're working hard to get rich just to buy fancy things, it might be a good idea to change your approach. Instead of connecting your financial success to material possessions, focus on the power and freedom that money can provide. The less you need to be happy, the easier it is to become richer. So, it's not about how much you have, it's about how you use what you have over time. 7. Never stop investing in yourself. Have you ever heard the saying that knowledge is power? Well, it's not just a saying, it's true. The richest people aren't just those with the most money. They're often the ones who keep learning and gaining new skills. The world is changing really fast, and what you knew before might not be useful today. But if you keep on learning and gaining new skills, you'll stay ahead. So, spending time and maybe some money on books, courses, or online tutorials isn't just an expense. It's an investment in your future. The more you know, the more you earn. Rich people understand this well. They keep on investing in themselves, whether it's getting certificates, reading lots of books, attending seminars, or meeting new people. So, figure out where you need to get better, set aside time and resources to learn, and remember, growing isn't a one-time thing, it's something you do throughout your life. By always investing in yourself, you're getting ready for success. So, keep filling your brain with new knowledge, and you'll see how it pays off. 8. The Rule of Time 
If you ask a rich person, they'll tell you that time is the most important resource. Most people don't realize how time plays a role in becoming wealthy, and that's why many people stay financially average. But those who do understand how time works become good with money. Here are two key ideas about time and wealth. Firstly, trading time for money is hard. When you work for an hourly wage, it's tough to get rich unless you earn a lot per hour. We all have only 24 hours in a day. So, making a six-figure income on your own can be difficult. Secondly, time gets scarier as we age. When you're young and have no family responsibilities, you can work a lot. But as you get older and have family or other commitments, you can't work as much. Rich people know this, so they don't rely solely on their 24 hours a day. They build wealth by using other people's time, money, and expertise. That's why many of the richest people are business owners. It's not a coincidence. So, it's not that you completely misunderstand the concept of time. It's more about realizing that becoming rich means understanding how time fits into your journey to wealth, whether it's gaining experience in your career, starting a successful business, or investing in things like stocks. Time is a key factor. Once you figure out how to make the most of your time and the time of others, getting rich becomes a lot easier. 9. Understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Rich people understand the things that make them richer and the things that make them poorer. Most people like to buy things that make them poorer. Society makes it seem like buying certain things is normal, but let's take a moment to think about it. For example, let's say you take a loan to buy a fancy new car for $30,000. The problem is, as soon as you drive it out of the dealership, its value starts going down very fast. This means your expensive car is becoming less valuable over time. Don't think that rich people don't buy things like this. They do. But the key difference is that they mostly invest their money in things that become more valuable over time. It's a smarter way to build wealth. Think of it like this. Liabilities are things that lose value as soon as you buy them, like a brand new car, or a high-end smartphone that becomes outdated quickly. These things might make you happy for a little while, but they take money out of your pocket in the long run. On the other hand, assets are like your financial buddies. They are investments that grow in value over time. It could be properties that increase in price or stocks that go up in value. When you put your money into assets, you're letting your money work for you. So, next time you think about spending your money, ask yourself if what you're buying is an asset or a liability. Choose wisely, because by making smart choices, you can make your money work for you and become wealthier over time. You've learned some important money rules, but remember, it's not enough to just know them. The real magic happens when you start using them in your everyday life. Change can be scary, but you don't have to completely transform your life all at once. Start small. Maybe cut back on how much you watch on Netflix or begin learning about investments. With each little step, you'll notice a positive change not just in your bank account, but in your entire life. I hope I have not wasted your time. If you find value in this video, please share it with your friends and family who might need this message to inspire them on their financial journey. I wish you success. Thank you for watching till the end. Have a beautiful day or night, and I'll see you in the next video.